Welcome to the Healthier You Show, a guide to living a healthy, active, and productive life. Today we have two special guests here with us, and Alana will tell us a little bit more about them and what we're going to talk about. Yeah, so we're very excited to welcome Gary Pia and Sonia Tang, who are the volunteer. American Cancer Society. Um, so we'll just kind of go ahead and jump right into things. I was hoping maybe Gary can just kind of kick us off and give us a general overview of the American Cancer Society. Thank you very much. Yeah, the American Cancer Society mm -hmm. is a nationwide, community-based, mm -hmm. voluntary health organization that is dedicated to eradicating cancer as a major health issue by preventing cancer, saving lives from cancer, diminishing suffering from cancer through research, education, advocacy, and service. Interesting. So, so how did you first um, get, start, get involved with the ACS? Sonia, how did you do that? Well, um, I was motivated because I lost my father cancer when I was very young. And as an adult, I've always had a passion for serving the community. And I thought, how can I marry these two important issues that had such a great impact in my life um, and, and have it add value? So I reached out to ACS when I had um, some free time. And slowly, that evolved to a, a very big role um, I feel is important to me now. Um, I work with ACS starting with Daffodil Days, a program that helped um, deliver flowers mm -hmm. to cancer patients in the hospital while they were getting their chemotherapy. So that was very rewarding for me and my passion to serve grew from there. And now I'm involved in a lot of various programs that ACS has. Now tell us a little bit about these uh, programs, especially Road to Recovery program. Well, the American Cancer Society provides a tremendous mm -hmm. number of opportunities to provide service to cancer mm -hmm. patients and their families. I mean, it's, a, it's important to note that an individual just doesn't get cancer. It mm -hmm. affects everybody that's around them as well. Now, you mentioned Road to Recovery. That's a signature program that, mm -hmm. that we provide, which provides uh, rides and transportation mm -hmm. for cancer patients to and from their cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. And it's... Uh, not only is it a service, it's a free service. It, nobody has to pay to, for, for that service. Mm -hmm. And we uh, also, it's a, also a volunteer opportunity okay. because uh, we, we have the opportunity for drivers uh, to use their own car if they've got a, a good, safe car and a valid California driver's license mm -hmm. and proof of insurance and they can take a few minutes to uh, attend a training. Uh, if they have four hours a mm -hmm. week, they can participate in this. Mm -hmm. We also have need for driver coordinators mm -hmm. who are a very important part of the program because they're the ones who arrange the, uh, the needed tri trips that need to be taken. And, and being bilingual mm -hmm. is, is really a big plus. Spanish, Mandarin, Cantonese, mm -hmm. Korean, Vietnamese, those are, you know, great opportunity to serve. That's fantastic. So one of the things I um, maybe you can address some of the things that somebody will learn mm -hmm. in the training because I know, um, you know, it's driving, you know, patients to their chemotherapy. I'm sure there's a lot of, um, you know, it's a very difficult time for them. And so there's a lot of um, emotions that they may be dealing with. How is a volunteer when you may be, be prepared to handle that? I mean, is that something that will address during the training? It's definitely part of the training. Um, and yet, the, the thing that's interesting is what we hear from our drivers mm -hmm. is how rewarding it is mm -hmm. about the relationships that they create with the people mm -hmm. that they're serving mm -hmm. and what a blessing it becomes, not only to the patient, but to the driver. So how do people get um, involved in this uh, Road to Recovery program? Sonia, give them the number. <laughs> we'll put the number on the screen as well and the website. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get that. Um, so for the the audience watching, they'll be able to see the num the phone number and call and the number on the screen. Also, look up the American Cancer Society website, and we have a nationwide number. And um, the internet is a wonderful tool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. yeah, so the the address is cancer dot org. Okay. okay. And the phone number is eight hundred. Two three four. Excuse me. It's eight hundred ACS two three four five. Great. We'll have that ready for our audience. Uh, so now, what are some of the challenges um, as a volunteer, or um, it to was you learn more about ACS and the work that um, ACS is doing on the ground? I don't think of them as challenges. Mm -hmm. I think of them as opportunities. Okay. Um, 
I got involved initially because I knew someone socially who worked for the American Cancer mm -hmm. Society who invited me to attend a meeting. And I attended that meeting, and this was 1988, <laughs> and I never went away. Good memory. <laughs> never went away. I mean, they kept mm -hmm. giving me new and interesting things mm -hmm. uh, uh, and challenges to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned, because when I st first started mm -hmm. volunteering, I didn't have a personal cancer story like mm -hmm. Sonia's. And I d wasn't really aware of uh, what a major mm -hmm. factor cancer is in our society. Mm -hmm. It touches so many people's lives. Absolutely. And I learned that as a, a result of being an American Cancer Society volunteer. And so it, it just, I just came to have an increasing sense of what a, an impact mm -hmm. me being a volunteer could have in helping eradicate and, uh, this scourge thing that we call cancer. Mm -hmm. And kind of touching upon that, I mean, you've had so many years of service with the American Cancer Society. I was hoping maybe you could touch upon maybe um, a story that kind of reaffirms, you know, every day why you're doing what you're doing and really kind of um, talks to the impact that the American Cancer Society is having. I just had uh, that experience a few minutes ago when I listened to Sonia tell mm -hmm. her story. Uh Every time you hear somebody tell their story, the mm -hmm. impact cancer had on their, their family, on themselves personally, it just reaffirms to me mm -hmm. the, the good that comes from being an American Cancer Society volunteer. You know, part of um, what I've learned in working with the Cancer Org in the last few years is um, I really value having a forum to talk about my personal experience with mm -hmm. cancer, but it gave me a big revelation that a lot of families culturally from my background are not talking about cancer, mm -hmm. and they're not um, getting information on the resources available, and you know the awareness isn't out there, and that adds to why I'm continuing to work with the cancer org, because resources are available, and it's okay to talk about it, and there are preventative measures that are not being advertised in, in our community. Right, you, I think Chung, you touched on a great point. Change starts from awareness. So can you share with us your personal experience of how can, American Cancer Society has impacted your life and your family's life um, on that particular um, aspect? Yeah, now that I'm working with the Cancer Org and we're talking about um, healthy eating, mm -hmm. lifestyle changes, it opens up the dialogue and mm -hmm. discussion for even our older family members who are saying, you know what, you're right, exercise is important, you know. Um, it's important to talk about um, your diet. Mm -hmm. It's, a, you know, maybe we should tell our husbands to stop smoking. <laughs> right. And Gary actually brought up a very interesting fact about smoking earlier. Yes, the, uh, the American Cancer so Society was instrumental mm -hmm. in advocating for laws that made it so that there's not smoking in restaurants mm -hmm. and, and bars and any other public places mm -hmm. in California. It, there was a time when smoking was normal, no longer, and it's, it's all for the better. For the better, absolutely. Yeah, and interesting fact, I know that the American Cancer Society is currently celebrating 100 years is that correct? That is correct. Uh, the, the society began in back east in New York City in uh, 1914 when a handful of doctors and community leaders got together and put forward the, the at that time, crazy notion that maybe they could eradicate cancer. Mm -hmm. um, they raised money, and uh, mo a lot of that money has funded research. Uh, there are over 50 uh, Nobel Prize winning researchers that got their funding from the mm -hmm. American Cancer Society. Um, groundbreaking uh, treatments and, and uh, testing like the pap smear and, and other things, mm -hmm. the smoking cessation, all of these things are a result of your American Cancer Society. Yeah, you know, I actually just had a chance to look at the website, kind of doing my own personal research mm -hmm. before I came on here, and I was, I was completely blown away. I think one of the things, it's a fantastic resource because you know, cancer is something we hear about, but like, you know, they, they broke it down in such a way that it really, the information was very accessible. Yeah. I thought it was, so um, kudos <laughs> to the American Cancer Society and really kind of um, making knowledge, you know, accessible for people. Mm -hmm. I was wondering some of the ways that maybe they do outreach in the community to kind of get people knowledge about, knowledgeable about um, cancer and how to prevent it. 
Well, one of the things that happens, I mean, Sonia, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, making strides? Yeah, I'm currently working on a campaign called Pink Down Pink, and we're um, working on a walk that's happening in Los Angeles in October called Making Strides okay. Against Breast Cancer. Mm -hmm. And we're bringing awareness out to the communities that, um, you know, we want to celebrate breast cancer survivors and the fight against breast cancer. So. If there's any interested volunteers, <laughs> look up our website, mm -hmm. give us a call. Um, the event is happening in October, and um, we really want to paint the town pink. Now that, you know, just on the same note of events, and I know that there's also Relay, Relay for Life in May, tell, you share with the audience a little bit more about that. Sure. The um, uh, El Monte Relay for Life is going oh, okay. to be on May 17th at uh, Mountain View High School. And if you want information, if you'd like to get involved, maybe put a team together and be one of the relay teams, uh, you can go to relayforlife.org forward slash El Monte CA. That's all one word, El Monte CA. You know, and I just want to kind of, can you kind of give the structure of a Relay for Life? Because I know they're 24-hour uh, events. Uh, what's the purpose and reasoning behind that? Well, the, the purpose is to uh, celebrate the, uh, uh, our survivors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's to uh, also, oh gosh, I'm forgetting the tagline, celebrate, remember, remember <laughs> that our, our friends and family members mm -hmm. who who'd lost their fight mm -hmm. and to fight back against cancer. Mm -hmm. So the, the way a Relay for Life starts, the first lap is only survivors. Oh, we we okay. put our survivors out there and it's a wonderful thing mm -hmm. for a community to come together and see their, their friends and neighbors and family members who've been touched by cancer out there on that track because they survived. Fantastic. So we, and that's, that's how they start. And we have uh, e events throughout the day. There's music, there's food. Uh, each team comes together and, and has their own little enclave. And uh, you know, you know they're th many times they're themed. So you know, you'll have, uh, Somebody will have like uh, Dr. Jim's uh, survivors and oh, okay. you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's really a tremendous event, and we we do keep somebody on the track for 24 hours from, from your team, okay. and uh, the idea is that uh, we will keep relaying until a cure is found. Mm, interesting. No. May 17th. May 17th. May 17th remember. <laughs> Now, um, just kind of taking, you know, taking a step back, and I'm going to ask a very basic question. What are the major uh, types of cancers out there, and which ones are the most dangerous ones? That's an interesting question. Um, let me answer you this mm -hmm. one. Uh, if you look at the most prevalent cancers, mm -hmm. you're talking about lung, mm -hmm. you're talking mm -hmm. about okay. colon, you're talking about okay. breast. Okay. Uh, most dangerous, you know, you, you, you can't find a more dangerous cancer than uh, pancreatic cancer. Oh, okay. One of the most aggressive cancers going. Mm -hmm. But um, we focus mostly on the cancers that most people have. So mm -hmm. that's why you, uh, you hear recommendations for if you're over 50, mm -hmm. get a colonoscopy. Okay. Get, get it checked. The same thing with mammograms. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Prevention is a very important part. And mm -hmm. Sonia, you, you mentioned a very th important thing about nutrition. If you have a healthier diet, healthier lifestyle, uh, that's even better than early detection. That's prevention. And I think Gary makes a really good point. Prevention is the key word. And I think a lot of people who are afraid to talk about the disease and cancer, mm -hmm. they're not asking for these tests when they go to make their doctor visits. And it's okay to ask about colon cancer, mm -hmm. ask for a mammogram. If you're not, if your doctor's not reaching out to you, it's okay to reach out to them. I see. That's you have to be your own advocate. We absolutely do. We have to be our own advocate. Um, so, yes, I had a question. I mean, you, are you more the millennial generation and stuff like that? I'm assuming <laughs> we didn't ask ages. We don't ask ages. We don't discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was wondering, really I mean, so have you tried to kind of work to um, engage your age group um, and kind of get more um, in tune with their bodies and their needs and really kind of seeking out those preventative um, Yeah, services? again, working with the Cancer Org has really given me a chance to talk about cancer to um, my friends and my family. Um, and even in a professional level, I've been able to talk about my involvement 
with the community mm -hmm. CS and, and cancer and it's really given me a voice to ask people about their lifestyle and have they thought about mm -hmm. the choices mm -hmm. that they're making. Um, I'm part of uh, recently joined uh, ambassador board for a birthday ball which okay. is um, really helping me get connected with professionals young professionals my mm -hmm. age and we're coming together for the same cause so it's it's nice to see that all generations are paying attention to the lifestyle choices that we're making and the fight against cancer mm -hmm. can you just describe a little bit more what birthday ball is oh, and what because it is? Um, uh, the American Cancer Society is celebrating their hundred years uh, they're throwing a big birthday um, gala, and so we're we're um, celebrating the hundred years by saying we're celebrating and fighting for more birthdays. Part of the, of the society's branding is that we are the official sponsor of birthdays. Love it. Because <laughs> a world with more birthdays is a world with less cancer. Mm -hmm. mm. And I really kind of like the positioning of that. It's very kind of more. Um, inspiring, celebratory, you know, cancer for I'm sure for many people is it's a scary thing. Probably a lot of people avoid it, but mm -hmm. I think the way that, you know, with that kind of messaging, it kind of makes it more, um, I don't know, more, it's easier, it almost feels like it's easier to talk about when you're talking about celebrating. Right. <laughs> very, very much so. You know, um, every birthday is a blessing, mm -hmm. and our, our wish is that everybody collect many more of them. Right, absolutely, and I think it's just so important that it provides that platform where the survivors or families who, of those who are affected could come together, share about their own, their stories, and to feel that that support network. and And then, as a bonus of that, it's connecting with like-minded individuals, professionals, colleagues. Both Sonia and Gary have mentioned about how your involvement in with ACS have opened up a different, a set, a different set of uh, new doors of opportunities where you get to meet others. And now what, you know, on the same note, what are we looking, uh, if you could kind of look into the future, what does a future, you know, for, what, what, what does that future look like for volunteers of uh, ACS and AACS? It's a very exciting future. Um, the American Cancer Society made a commitment mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. to begin taking its mes message globally. Okay. Um, with the restrictive laws on tobacco in the United States, mm -hmm. the tobacco companies are exporting ah, okay. even more. Mm -hmm. And so we are, there are partnership opportunities to take mm -hmm. the uh, life-saving message of the American Cancer Society mm -hmm. into other countries. Okay. Now that's the big, the 30,000 foot level. Right. But we have also have opportunities to, to make an impact right here in the local community. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things the society does for uh, businesses and small businesses is we have a, a program of information that would almost acts like your, your company's health program, mm -hmm. which brings that information about healthy eating, exercise, smoking cessation, and it's all free. So free is good. Free is free good. Is good. <laughs> and so th th there's lots of different opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the thing that I would say to anyone watching out here, mm -hmm. if you want to get involved, you want to make a difference in your community and a difference around cancer, call 800-ACS-2345. It's available 24-7, 365. And uh, whether you're calling for, to volunteer or you need cancer information, there will be somebody there to talk to you in your language at any time you want to call. Oh. So it's really that easy, just a, just a phone call, just pick it up? That's right. Just pick up the phone. There's a lot of opportunities, and we're excited to see a lot of new faces representing our community. So pick up the phone. Hey, well, you know, so if to kind of uh, come to a close, what would be your message as an ambassador of um, American Cancer Society to the audience? Um, my message is it's very rewarding, and no job is too big or too small, and you would be amazed at um, the opportunities that will come your way once you roll up your sleeves and get involved. What she said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Every word of it. Thank you so much for all the great work that you're doing and, and you are changing lives and touching lives and saving lives in many different ways and everything you do and, and, and thank you um, American Cancer Society for doing everything that, uh, that, that should be done um, in, 
and again, we hope to be able to learn more about American Cancer Society and continue uh, to work with you and to spread the message. Thanks for having us. And just maybe really fast, if you can say one more time about the Relay for Life in May. El Monte, Relay for Life. At, oh, help me with this high school. <laughs> Mountain View. That's right. Mountain, there you go. Mountain View <laughs> That's why there's two of us. <laughs> Mountain View High School on the 17th of May, uh, relayforlife.org forward slash El Monte CE. CA, El Monte CA. Will Thank we see you. you guys there? What's that? Will we see you guys there? Um, I have a commitment on another <laughs> day. Another so you won't day. see me. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'll be at the birthday ball. There you go. There's always something to do. <laughs> there certainly is. Well, I, we will be there. I'll be there. <laughs> they, for the audience watching, thank you for tuning in, and we'll, all, we'll see you all next time. And we're black.